Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. And if you are new, thanks so much for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. Today we are continuing with the Reading Across Canada 2023 challenge. If you aren't sure what this reading challenge is or what it's about, then I will leave a link to my introduction video in the description box um, where you can learn all about it. I will also leave links below to the tracker that you can use and I will have the schedule and the prompts. I'll have all of that below as well. So this month we are in Alberta and I'm going to talk about the books that I chose for my own reading uh, for this month and then I will give book recommendations as promised for next month for March's prompt. And I will also talk about more resources, including shouting out a lot of other Canadian booktubers. So let's get started. This month, we are in Alberta, the province that I currently live in. I am so lucky to live here. I love being able to see the mountains every single day, and I can always find something to do. Uh, many of you know from last year that Calgary has a hot chocolate festival during the month of February and I'm currently participating in that as much as I can and the prompt for Alberta is quite broad since it is a book on a topic you are passionate about. So this could be so many things for so many people and I did give some recommendations but this is really about any topic that you want to read about that is either set in Alberta or has been written by someone born and or living in Alberta. And I'm looking forward to finding out what everyone has chosen for this. Um, I've seen a few choices. So my number one choice and the book that I will definitely read is The Skin We're In by Desmond Cole. This is nonfiction and it looks at racism and resistance in Canada during the year 2017. And I think that this is a perfect read for Black History Month. It's an important read and it's one that I don't really want to be left unread on my shelves any longer. So I'm going to read it this month. Um, I'm hoping to get to this probably next week. And then the second book that I'm going to try and fit in um, if I have time, because I'm also reading for the BookTube Prize and for Canada Reads, um, but another book on my shelf that I think is important is Legacy, Trauma, Story, and Indigenous Healing by Suzanne Method. Um, I am always trying to read, you know, books and stories that will help my own work in Truth and Reconciliation, so this is a high priority for me. Uh, if not this month, then definitely soon. So please let me know what you are reading for Alberta's prompt. Um, okay, so now let's take a look ahead to March's prompt. We travel east to Saskatchewan. Alberta is a prairie province, but we are really in territory now that we're in Saskatchewan. Uh, you can feel the landscape change the further east that you go. And the two biggest cities in the province are Regina and Saskatoon. So I tell you this because it might be helpful if you are doing searches for authors, you can do them from those cities. The prompt for Saskatchewan, if you are following the prompt, is to read a memoir, autobiography, or biography. So I have a few of those uh, for recommendations. And then I will also recommend some books that are not uh, nonfiction, but still fit the prompt of Saskatchewan, if you are looking for more authors um, from Saskatchewan. So I'm going to start with what I think is a Canadian classic, and that is Half Breed by Maria Campbell. Maria Campbell is a Métis woman who wrote this book about the first 30-ish years of her life. Um, this was published in the early 1970s. It is not an easy read. Uh, Maria writes with a real rawness. She shares about her experience at residential school, her time taking care of her family after her mother passed away, her marriage, 
uh, the difficulties of being from two different cultures and really not feeling like she fits in. Uh, her time as a sex worker and her struggles with alcohol and addictions. Um, I believe that if you want to learn about Indigenous stories in Canada, you need to read this book. Um, I also believe that it is because of Maria Campbell and a few others like her that we have Indigenous uh, literature now. So the book that I am hoping to read for this prompt next month is Call Me Indian by Fred Sasaskamoose. Um, this is about Fred's experience. He uh, was a residential school survivor and he was the first treaty Indigenous player in the NHL. Um, so there's racism and prejudice we know in sport uh, that is a topic that is important and it's one that I'll be talking about later in this year um, when I do a book pairing. So I'm hoping to include this book in that as well. Another book that has been on my shelf forever uh, and I really, really need to read it. Uh, so it's also a potential for me next month is Stolen Life, Journey of a Cree Woman. This is by Rudy Weeb and Yvonne Johnson. This is the story of Yvonne Johnson, but is it is um, Rudy Weeb who was born in Saskatchewan. This is the story of Yvonne Johnson, who was a victim of sexual abuse she was sentenced to life in prison uh, for the 1989 murder of a man that she thought was a child abuser. It's also a story about the justice system, uh, the collaboration of writing this book, and a story of healing. Another book that's been on my radar um, after I had the opportunity to hear the author speak is Clifford, a memoir, a fiction, a fantasy, a thought experiment and this is by Harold R. Johnson, um, another Indigenous author and this is about his brother Clifford and the memories that he has when he returns home for Clifford's funeral. I heard Harold read from this book a few years ago and it has always stayed with me and I have told myself many times that I need to pick this book up. Next up is one that was recommended to me but that I haven't read yet and that is Burning Down the House. This is by Russell Wangerski, uh, which is about his experience as a volunteer firefighter. So I thought that might be interesting. Now if you're thinking, what's with all the sad and heavy topics, Jolene? Uh, no worries, this next one is something I think is a little bit different. Um, it's called It Seemed Like a Good Idea at the Time, and this is by Annabelle Townsend. And it's about how the author followed her dream to become a coffee entrepreneur and just all of the adventures that she experiences along the way. So this one sounds much more lighthearted and entertaining. So if you're looking for something like that, it might be good. Um, another memoir that might be more upl uplifting um, is Finding My Way by Lois Simi. And this is a coming of age story in the prairies and how Lois Simi became a writer. Now, if you're like um, Jolene, I'm not really into memoirs or autobiographies, but you know, I really want to read a book by author from Saskatchewan, then I have you covered there as well. So don't worry about that. Um, first, I will say that Harold R. Johnson has written many other books, so please, you know, check his work out. The other one that I have on my shelf and that I've read is Corvus, and this is good if you are interested in trickster stories, uh, science fiction, and apocalyptic reads. Um, for BC, I recommended Five Little Indians, which I have here by Michelle Good. And this book could work for Saskatchewan as well, since that is where Michelle Good was born. So this is another option. And perhaps a more well-known author um, and his books would be Jan Martel, um, the author of Life of Pi, uh, Beatrice and Virgil, and the High Mountains of Portugal. I loved Life of Pi, and I haven't read the other two yet, but Beatrice and Virgil is about a donkey. Um, I think it's about, you know, a lot more than that, but that's what I know. Um, and then The High Mountains of Portugal 
is historical fiction. So if you're looking for historical fiction, this is an option. Um, I have two more Saskatchewan authors to share with you. First is Diane Warren. Um, I've only read one of her books, but I know she has written many as well. So you can check her out. And Cool Water is the one that I read. And it takes place in a small Saskatchewan town. And I remember it having, you know, a prairie small town vibe to it with a story that introduces you to all the different characters that you can imagine in a small prairie town. And then last but not least on my recommendations list is Guy Vanderhaeg, who is a very well-respected Canadian author who has written a number of books. Um, the only one that I have read is The Last Crossing. Uh, now, when I read this, I didn't realize that it was the second book in the Frontier trilogy. So my plan is to one day start with the first book and read the trilogy. So the books in this trilogy uh, would be good if you are, I would say, looking for more of a Western cowboy historical fiction kind of book. Um, the first book in the trilogy is The Englishman's Boy, then The Last Crossing, and it finishes with A Good Man. Um, I also have Homesick, there we go, Homesick by him, but he's got lots to check out. So this is not an exhaustive list. Um, there are so many books that I could offer, but these are the ones from my shelf and that are on my radar and books that, you know, would fit for Saskatchewan in the month of March. Um, and many of that fit the prompt if that's what you're looking for. So I will, as always, put resources in the description box. Uh, we are in the midst of Canada Reads right now. And I don't think any of the books, even on the long list for Canada Reads, fit for Saskatchewan, but you might find something there for, you know, some of the other provinces and prompts. So they are also starting the Craving Lit, Craving Can Lit, sorry, list for 2023. So I will leave a link to that as well. Um, there's a number of books already on that list, and I will leave a whole bunch of links to check those things out. So I'm also going to tag a bunch of Canadian booktubers because I am not the only one and um, and there's lots out there. There are other Canadians out there who, you know, read a lot of can lit. Some of them um, like Lindy from Lindy's Magpie Reads. She's always got amazing can lit. Um, she also reads many different genres. Uh, Sean the Book Maniac is in Saskatchewan, if I'm not mistaken. So Sean might have some uh, local recommendations for us that, you know, I never thought of. Uh, Jenny Johnston is following along uh, with the challenge as well. Um, and so is Elizabeth from Bookwins and Books. And um, there's just so many. So if you want to support uh, other Canadian booktubers, there's um, Books at the Bottom of the Stairs, Fraser Simon, Springboard Thought, uh, Remembered Reads, Cure the Scrivener, Books with Emily Fox, Duncan McCurdy, um, Shannon's Bookish Musings and Music, Getting Hige With It, uh, Camila from Hasty Books, who is a Canadian living in Scotland, Chantel Reads All Day, Rick McDonnell, Rosie Cockshut, The Poptimist, The Book Bully, uh, Brownlow Books, uh, Too Fond of Books. So there's so many, and I'm going to tag and link all of them below. Um, and if you are from Canada and you're watching this and you think, Jolene, you didn't shout me out, uh, please let me know and I will make sure to get you the next time. So please let me know the books that you are reading for Alberta and maybe, you know, what books are you planning or thinking about reading for Saskatchewan? And please, if you have other suggestions or you want to add to this list, feel free to share them because it helps everyone. Um, if you are looking for something more specific, you know, please let me know that too, and we might be able to help you out. Thanks so much for being part of this challenge. It's been so great to see people take part and just get excited about Can Lit. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and don't forget to make every day an adventure.